Welcome back. Happy Monday, everybody. Animal shelters all across the country, they're filled with pets, of course, looking for a good home. And we've all heard spaying and neutering our pets is one of the most responsible things that we can do as owners. But when is the right time to do it? Dr. Eric Rulin from the St. Paul Pet Hospital. Good morning, guys. And Butter. Butter. Join us this morning to dive into this topic. Hot, I didn't realize how controversial. Hot topic. If you're a veterinarian yes. that uh, either tunes in and a new pet owner recently, this in the last five to seven years we've had a it, it's been a whirlwind and I think there's been a lot of confusing information out there and so we're gonna answer every single question you have okay today. <laughs> why is it so hot right now like what is okay. the conversation so back in 2013 uh, UC Davis brought out a study that was looking at it was a retrospective study that looked at a bunch of different dogs particularly there was golden retrievers that were looped in there they were looking at is there a correlation between diseases specifically genetic uh, or, or um, diseases that uh, that could be more expressed when a dog is spayed or neutered at a young age. They looked at cancers, they looked at orthopedic disease. It's a pretty small study. There's only about 700 golden retrievers that were put in that study, but they came up with some kind of alarming data that said that, you know, dogs should be spayed later in their in their life. So, a lot of veterinarians in the last again, like I said in the last 10 years, there's been some changing and shifting information about this, and we're seeing a uh, we're seeing a push among veterinarians to evaluate data like that as sort of the gold standard and they look at a, at a at a at that particular study and they have started to make some they, they make their own conclusions about that one thing to be it's important to remember so i guess we can back up we kind of dove right in there so spaying and neutering or gonadorectomy uh, is removal of the you know testicles for a male dog or removing of the ovaries in the united states almost all dogs that are females that are spayed their ovaries and their uterus is entirely removed okay wow. Obviously, it's a permanent. It's is a permanent surgery. We can't sure. remove this. So, and there's a lot of mixed beliefs that people feel, and belief is different than fact. And so, a lot of people bring their own emotions to it. And what ends up happening a lot of times in the exam room, you're going to come into my exam room. We're going to have a conversation about your dog. I am making recommendations based on the population of dogs and what I understand of the realm of possibilities that can happen with a dog, your dog's age, and. And I am making a recommendation based on many dogs, maybe not particularly your dog. Mm -hmm. There are some breed specific data points that are coming in that may say if you are a larger breed dog, um, you should maybe wait a little bit longer. The thing to remember about what age we, we spay and neuter our pets, it is very different to, to say neuter a dog at three to four months of age that is a very, very different surgery than neutering a dog at two years of age. The sure. procedure's the same, but this is kind of, a, this maybe gets a little, hits it home for people, but it's like a circumcision in a three day old boy versus a 30 year old. Wow. Same right. surgery, very different complication rate, right. very different Recovery potentials rate. for risks, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So when we talk about people, I'm seeing this trend, in, especially in our clinic and a lot of hospitals uh, across Minnesota, we're seeing a trend to start spaying dogs later. Well, when I have a kind of a larger, maybe overweight, maybe a Labrador retriever, um, golden retriever, that's one and a half or one that's already gone through a couple of heat cycles, their chance of hemorrhage or bleeding is much higher mm. than that dog, let's say three, four months of age. The other thing to consider too, is let's say I've got a situation where I have a dog that's very social. Well, if this dog goes into heat and I'm at the dog park, there's sure. a potential to have a, you know, a problem there. Not let alone if you, I have a male that's intact and I'm at the dog park, there's an increased chance of risk for aggression and for you know, breeding another dog. So sure. every situation is different. And I guess veterinarians, when you're, when you're talking to them, they're usually making kind of a blanket recommendation for where we should be, you know, when we should be doing this. And that safe age has always been kind of settled around six months to eight months of age. And that's a really good time frame. It really becomes a personal question for the veterinarian and for the owner themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one thing to kind of take into consideration. But I think the biggest thing that's been changing and there's been these kind of smaller, you know, retrospective studies where they will take a, they will take, um, a point in time and then they look back at data and that's called a retrospective study. And those can have their own bias kind of cooked into them. So, sure. that, so that's kind of where we're starting to see, I wouldn't say necessarily confusion, but we're seeing more information and sometimes more information muddies up some of the water. Yeah. Sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> the internet. <laughs> yeah, Hello, exactly. Internet. So how about for cats? 
Is cats, it the same? Cats, same recommendations to spay or neuter before they, you know, for the females before they go into their first heat cycle is appropriate. And for the males, for male cats, they're, all of the health benefits far outweigh any of the negative side effects. Uh, getting them neutered right away at a young age is okay. really, really, is, is really, really important. So, so maybe a little more cut and dry with cats? Yeah, with cats, yeah. It's, cats, cats it's a little bit easier there. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm getting from you, it's not so much that the, the recommendation to spay and neuter your pets if you don't have plans of any breathing, like that maybe hasn't changed, it's just the timing. The timing has changed a little bit. And again, I, I would say that um, as an industry, we're probably moving away from these pediatric spays of like under 12 weeks of age or neutering. Um, although a lot of rescues out there, you know, they're placing these puppies at a very young age. They want to guarantee that that dog is obviously sterilized. Um, if I have a family that's, say, that has a dog, um, a large breed female dog, I'm seeing a trend in the industry to wait a little bit longer, right up before that dog goes into the first heat cycle. The biggest issues we have with disease, particularly in female dogs, is uh, uterine infections called a pyometra. Um, those are those are a major um, major issue that we deal with. Mammary carcinomas is probably the second biggest issue, and obviously pregnancy. You know, we can avoid any any unwanted pregnancies. In the early 1970s, we were euthanizing in the United States between 13 and 15 million household pets were euthanized from overpopulation. This to, in the last year, that number is under one million. So we have cut our incidents because of spaying and neutering programs. We have cut unwanted euthanasias by at least 13 times. So when we think about that, the benefits so far outweigh it and, and all the health benefits. Again, it's just this timing is, is becoming a little right. bit more of a debate. Yeah, right. this is, I foster dogs and the rescue, if they have puppies, you have to, you get like a certificate to neuter and you have to basically, yep. the, you have to set the appointment at the vet before yep. you can have that puppy in hand. So that makes sense now why they do that. Yes, yeah, okay. and it's, it is such a hot topic and everybody you talk to is right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> none of us are taking time to kind of back up and look at all the data together. And you could talk to one veterinarian that is so, you know, stuck in their, not stuck in their ways, but they're digging their heels in. And then you talk to a breeder and then you talk to a foster, you know, yeah. director and they all, they are all taking and living their own life experience and they have their own experiences that have shaped what they believe. And at the end of the day, still spaying and neutering our pets is still the best, the best thing for long-term health of, their, of, of those animals. Yeah. Do you sure. foresee more studies on this as it becomes a hotter topic? You know, the fantastic thing is, you know, the American Veterinary Medical Association can compile data from some of our larger hospitals around the sure. country. And then we can get metadata and retrospective. And, and, and we've not seen a large shifting recommendation from the American Veterinary Medical Association mm. At, 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 you know, painting with a broad brush. We're not seeing that yet. Okay. So, yeah. We'll keep an eye on that. Dr. Eric Erlin. So, thank you. Still Butter. get your, still get your pets spayed and neutered. I'm going to do a, the Bob Barker for us all hey. right here. So. Yeah, they love it. Get Bob it out Barker. there. And Butter's taking a little nap. She got into the garbage last night. Oh, yeah. That wasn't you supposed to. You just outed yeah, that might, that Nobody's supposed to know about that. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> he so never makes The garbage mistake. was open this much. <laughs> and, of course, Butter. I, I put her on a little bit of a diet lately. So her and I are trying to. We're, we're, we're leaning down for, for beach season. And she got into the garbage <laughs> last night. And she had a hoot nanny. She had a good time from the looks of things. Oh, I'm so. sorry. I Pain outed you, Butter. <laughs> oh. If you want but more then. information, head to stpaulpet.com. All right.